Hello and welcome to today's webinar on comparing and deploying Oracle database changes. Uh, I'm James Mercer, I'm the marketing manager for the Oracle Tools division at Redgate Software. Uh, today I'm joined with joined by Tom Harris, who's the head of Oracle Tools, uh, and Neil Anderson, who's a software engineer within the Oracle Tools division, uh, again at Redgate Software. So just a few things before we start. Uh, you'll all be on mute for the duration of the webinar. That's just to enable us to, to go through the points uh, and also so that you can hear uh, the presenters clearly. Uh, I'm obviously now talking, so if anybody can't hear me, uh, you won't hear this message, but please type in the control panel. If at any time you can't hear us, uh, it'll pop up a message for us. Uh, there will be a Q&A session at the end, uh, but please feel free to type your questions in the questions box on the control panel in advance, uh, particularly if you kind of come up against, against things that you want clarification on uh, or just general questions about comparing and deploying changes. Uh, everybody will receive a recording of the full webinar after the session. So the agenda for today, uh, we're going to have a quick introduction to Redgate software. Uh, I'm sure a few of you are wondering who we are and why we're putting on this presentation. We're going to look at Oracle database development uh, and, and how you would be looking to migrate changes and a typical scenario uh, that you're likely to encounter. We'll move on to looking at different approaches to migrating changes from one Oracle database to another uh, and then seeing what you can get or what's provided with, within the Oracle SQL developer uh, before moving on to a demonstration of the Redgate Oracle tools uh, and then we'll finally summarize the webinar uh, and then give you a chance to ask us some questions uh, for which we'll answer at the end of the session. So Hurigo Software, uh, we're based in Cambridge in the UK. Uh, we were founded in 1999, we have about 200 employees. We're a privately held company uh, with annual revenues of around $30 million uh, per year uh, and growing at about 40% per year. We started uh, within the SQL Server and our Redgate tools are viewed as a gold standard within this technology, but our Oracle and .NET tools are the market share for these tools are growing rapidly. Priority sell to the end user or via third parties to developers and DBAs. All of our tools have a very strong focus on usability, something we, we strongly believe in the core philosophy of Redgate. We offer full free trials of all of our tools uh, and full support throughout evaluation and deployment. Above all, we want all of our tools to be as easy to evaluate, to use and to purchase as possible uh, and we hope that sort of every interaction you have with Redgate uh, follows this. I'm going to now pass over to Tom Harris uh, who's going to discuss the other parts of this webinar uh, and then demonstrate our Oracle tools. Uh, hello everybody, uh, my name is Tom Harris, uh, I'm the head of Oracle Tools at Redgate. Uh, I've worked at Redgate for 10 years uh, next week, so this is something of an anniversary uh, webinar. Uh, my background is in uh, development and mathematics, uh, so I've worked on many tools that Redgate has produced over the years. Uh, and for the past couple of years I've been focusing on Oracle and trying to uh, take Redgate's most successful tools for SQL Server and bring them uh, to the Oracle developers. So uh, in some sense it's a classical problem that we have here. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, most of you guys are probably doing uh, database development, uh, maybe not full time, maybe only as part of your role, uh, but typically you'll be interacting with uh, many, many different Oracle environments. So uh, perhaps during development uh, you're making changes to your development instance. Uh, possibly as part of a team, maybe there's several of you all working uh, towards a, a deadline, a goal, uh, some features that you need to get into the database. Uh, but you're probably also uh, putting your mind that there, there are test instances. You need to make sure that your test Oracle servers are also performing well, that they reflect uh, the state of your development database if that's the right thing to do. And then further down the line, uh, you may well have uh, user acceptance testing, pre-production, 
uh, staging, and probably finally production or multiple production servers. And so really the focus uh, of the conversation today is to think about how you're currently uh, moving changes between those different environments. Uh, the focus will mostly be on schema, uh, but I may also touch on how you might be handling uh, data propagation as well. So I've already touched on this, but I'll simplify it down to what I consider to be the typical scenario. Uh, so you've got a whole bunch of changes uh, in your development uh, server. So possibly team activity, possibly just as an individual. But as part of a release, you've, uh, for example, written a whole bunch of new store procedures, some new triggers, and you've been changing the way uh, the DDL is written for some tables and some view definitions. And uh, these, I mean, these changes could be relatively straightforward, or they could be very involved and very intricate. Uh, and so the, the real challenge is you may get to the point where you're completely happy with the state of your development instance. You know, all the developers think that the work's done. Uh, it, it, everything seems to be good on the development box. But the, the QA person or the QA manager or maybe even yourself is starting to think about the next step, which uh, will be, well, we're going to need to test all of this development work that we've done uh, before we can actually submit it to go through to production. And the, the challenge is, well, how do you go about moving those changes from one environment to another? You, you're looking for a way to do this, which is uh, slip. You don't want to be spending a lot of time doing this because the challenge of the development is really in doing the development, not in moving the changes between different environments. So you certainly want to find something which uh, saves you time and hopefully avoids you making mistakes. So it would be a shame to uh, kick off a, a QA process uh, and think, yes, we're definitely testing all the changes that we did in development, only to find out halfway through that you forgot to include some of those really important triggers, and all the testing is now invalid, and you've got to go and move the triggers across and then kick off the testing again because yeah, you didn't uh, have the, the process or the tooling uh, to make sure that you were following uh, a, good, a good way of working and making sure that everything uh, happened in the correct manner. So a lot, of my, a lot of my role at Reddit is spent uh, talking with uh, Oracle customers either in person at trade shows or site visits or on the phone. And I guess I've got a reasonably good feeling for the different ways that people are currently approaching this problem. So it's still fairly common that uh, developers or DBAs are having to write these scripts by hand. So when they when a developer changes a table and renames a column or adds a column or changes the type for a column uh, or does any small change to the description uh, of the table, they handwrite a script which will update uh, the old version of the table and take it to the new version of the table. Uh, that's great. They've become very good at doing that. Uh, I guess a useful skill to have. Uh, it has a good plus point. It gives the developer complete control over the, the script. So they know that whoever runs that script is running their script, and it's a script that they wrote. So that's a good point, but there are a lot of downsides. It's very, very time consuming. So uh, you know, you can do a piece of development work, and then you're always going to have to add on that extra 10% of time to write the script, which will update the table to take it to the new version. And that's not great fun. Uh, and because it's not great fun, it's easy to make a mistake. You perhaps do it at the end of the day when you'd rather be doing something else, or you do it when you're in a hurry. Uh, and so, you know, the scripts are, well, they're yours, but you've got to make sure that you haven't just, you know, forgotten about some small detail. So, but the, probably the most important point is that even if you do write all the scripts yourself, uh, the validation step of actually checking that the, that the script, when it is applied to the other instance, does make the two uh, tables the same, is still missing. So you've still also got to do another check, which is to say, OK, once I've applied the script and upgraded my table, does my table now match my table? Uh, and that's another thing that you're going to have to do by hand. Maybe you're going to have to run a query and you know, check that the two tables look the same side by side. 
So you're making life hard for yourself. So you could look for an easier route. What's a quick way out of this problem? Well, you could say, it's not my problem at all. I'm just going to hand it over to the DBA, and I'm going to say, I've made some changes to my table, but you're the DBA. You're in charge of everything from testing through pre-production. Uh, you, know, you need to script up these changes and submit them and make sure that everything gets propagated through by the deadline. And I'm a developer, so I'm not going to do it. I guess a valid approach. I've certainly spoken to organizations where they take uh, that, that kind of direction or that route. Uh, typically in environments where they're very concerned about control. So they really don't want developers uh, getting involved with anything to do with changes in the database. So from a development perspective, it's, you know, it seems like it's no work, but you lose complete control. So everything you submit goes to the DBA, and you don't know whether he's done the right thing or not. So what happens? Uh, he forgets about it, he's busy, uh, he comes back and he tells you that you can't do it, uh, he says you're an idiot for trying to do it, uh, he says why don't you do it my way, uh, he says I'll get back to you next week, and so it's hard to, it's hard to know whether things are going to work well from getting your development changes through into your staging or your testing environment because you're relying on someone else who isn't as bought in to the work as you are. He's perhaps got to do lots of other things, you've got to maintain the servers, back them up, ensure they're performing correctly, and yours is just another task that goes on his list of things to do. So, when that fails and you step back and think, well, we're not doing so well here with the interaction with the DBAs, you know, proving a bit tricky, perhaps we can just do it all from scratch. So we can just say, okay, uh, we're happy with the development database, it's all working fine, so why don't we just completely wipe the test database and build it from scratch. Relatively valid approach. Uh, we'll back up the development database, schema and data, copy those files across the test server, restore them, and there we go. We've got a perfectly decent uh, test instance, which we know is going to be the same as the dev instance because it's restored from backup. So we're happy. Uh, Time consuming, if these databases are large, backing up and restoring, it's gonna, it's gonna chug away. Uh, not what you need to be doing when people are breathing down your neck and saying, come on, we need to get on, we need to, you know, we need to validate, or whatever it is that the pressure is. Uh, probably the most important one is that it's a very big overkill uh, if you've only got a small number of changes. I mean, if you just realize towards the end of the development cycle that you've got to change one column, uh, it doesn't make sense to say, okay, well, let's, create the test database from scratch and do a backup uh, because you know that the amount of database that's changing is just that one column, but you could have thousands of objects. So you're, you, you're sort of using a sledgehammer to, to crack a nut. So you've got that issue. And you've also got the issue of data. So typically, test environments, test databases contain a whole bunch of the test data, which won't be in the development environment. So you know, lots of customers pull subsets of production data into tests so they can run their tests properly and they know that they're running their tests against uh, decent production data. So if you if you wipe the database and start from scratch, all that production data is gone. So what can you do? Well, you could go and get another set of production data, but again, it's going to take even longer and your process of getting your test database up and running is starting to look like a, an overnight task or whatever. And you start to think, well, I better ask the DBA to do this and you're back in the same situation where the DBA is busy and he said, oh, you shouldn't do it that way anyway. So you're not in a great situation. And you're thinking, well, I could do it by hand. That seems to give me the control, but I don't like it because it takes a lot of time. So maybe there are some decent third-party tools out there that can really help me with this task. Cut down on the errors, save me the time, eliminate the routine tasks, uh, and get me moving forward. So let's just quickly touch on some areas that you may already have heard of. So, uh, Oracle SQL Developer is uh, really well known, uh, widely distributed, free IDE. Uh, it's in fact the most uh, uh, common download from the Oracle website. So it's clearly very, very popular. Uh, they have something like over a million regular users. Uh, and it's a sort of an attempt to do most things that you might want to do uh, with a uh, development IDE. So it comes as not so much of a surprise that they have touched on this problem. And they do offer some fairly basic uh, scheme of comparison functionality. There's certainly not a lot of uh, fine control, uh, so it's, but it's there. Uh, it does come with a provider that uh, it's, although the IDE is free, uh, to use the scheme of comparison functionality you need to have a, a license for the change management pack, and the change management pack is, uh, is not free. It's uh, licensed per CPU, and it's thousands of dollars. So, 
there's a there's a cost associated with this that you need to think through. And as we'll see when we look at the red gate tool, there's a key piece of functionality which is missing is that the tool doesn't offer you any ability to see the the description of your objects or the DDL of your objects side by side. So you never have the opportunity to uh, uh, you never have the opportunity to really drill in, drill in and see where your objects are different. So uh, that's certainly something that's missing, and we'll we'll see how how Redkit addresses that. So uh, what I wanted to do now was uh, just switch over uh, to actually look at the the Redkit products. Uh, you're now getting a full screenshot of Schema Compare for Oracle. I'm going to step back from this and just show you how. Uh, the project and the product is set up. So when you come into the tool, uh, it looks something like this. Uh, this is a .NET application. It's a desktop application. It's a client application. So it doesn't run or install anything on your Oracle servers. It's something that you run from your from your client machine. And let's imagine we're in that scenario that I described, where we need to compare uh, two different environments, uh, work out what's different, and then deploy any changes from one environment to another. So fairly typically we've got uh, our login credentials here, we've got an obstacle uh, Oracle server, and we've got two different schemas that we're interested in comparing. This is, this is a, a, a relatively typical uh, setup. You may run the different schemas on the same server, or you may actually have a different server on the right hand side. Uh, so I'm interested in knowing what's happening between my widget staging server, no, my widget staging schema, and my widget production schema, and I want to move any changes that I think are relevant from my staging schema into my production server. So if I hit OK, it goes off and it retrieves the schema information from both of those uh, instances, uh, builds up a picture of all the objects that are in the schema, and allows me to, to see the differences. So I won't actually run the comparison because it's going to have to connect to the server, and that will uh, cut short the time we've got for the webinar. So I'll just quickly show you the results. So once you hit the comparison, it will, as I say, retrieve everything and then show you this screen. And so here we can see, I'll just close down those groups for you. Here we get to see a summary of uh, the state of the two different uh, instances. So on the left we've got our staging schema and on the right we've got our uh, uh, production schema. And we can see that there are a package and a table with some differences. And if I click on a difference, we get to see the magic. At the bottom of the screen, we get to see the DDL uh, for that table in the staging environment and also in the production environment. And it's a very rich uh, uh, difference in control. So it's color coded, uh, line numbered, uh, got highlights to show where the differences are. And so I can very visually see that in my production environment, I've got an extra column. Uh, of a very creative name called column one. And that column isn't part of the latest uh, staging in, staging version. So uh, what I want to do is automatically update my production environment uh, with my staging version of that table. And to do that, all I have to do is select that object, and that puts it in the set of objects that I'm going to deploy. So I'm happy with that. There's also a package with some differences. And we can see that there's a slightly different function that's been added to the package in the staging. So again, I'm going to select the object and move it across my production environment. And then I've got a whole bunch of new objects. So the developers have created some indexes, which I'm going to move across, and a new procedure, and a new sequence, and a new trigger. And again, as I click down, I can see each of those objects to review uh, down at the bottom. And I can also just have a quick check. There are already some objects which are identical. So here, there are no differences. These are all as you would expect. So once I'm happy with the set of objects I want to deploy, I can simply fire up the deployment wizard, and this is really cool. So what this allows me to do is generate that script. And this is the script we were talking about at the beginning that people write by hand or ask the DBA to write. Well, here's a tool that will create all that script for you. So my deployment wizard, a couple of options. I can either uh, use the tool to actually do the deployment, or typically people just create the script, and then the script is reviewed, uh, handed off to somebody else to execute it. So for, for the webinar, we'll just uh, go through and run it so you can see the power. And this is the step where it shows you the script. So very, very nice. So a relatively simple example, but we can see we've generated a good, you know, 50 lines or so of fairly intricate SQL. 
Uh, and we see the very first line is the very first thing we looked at, which is it's altering that table that we looked at and dropping that column to make sure that the staging environment change moves into production environment and then the indexes that we want to create. Uh, and this is very cool. This is, this is where you start to think, well, that's nice because I haven't got to write any of this stuff ever again by hand. It's all done for me. And that's really, really slick. And so uh, there's lots of nice functionality here. You can see a summary of what the script does if you don't want to read all the SQL, so you can get an overview of what's happening. Uh, we can see the objects being created and then modifying packages, uh, even with some text to describe what's happening. So that's very nice. If anything odd is going to happen, it's going to warn us. So for example, there could be situations where uh, the data uh, it could get truncated. So for example, if we're reducing the size of a column, uh, then you may think, gosh, well, I wonder what's going to happen to the data. The tool is smart enough to warn you about that and say, well, bear in mind that any data you've got stored in that column uh, is going to get truncated if, as you, if you change the size. So uh, very nice, uh, very easy to use, very slick. Uh, and for the webinar, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and run that deployment uh, just to prove to you, I guess, that it works uh, and that the objects do get migrated across correctly. So deploying now simply executes that final warning and I'll go ahead and execute the script against the production server. It's fairly artificial and you wouldn't normally be just running a, uh, uh, a script against the production server, but I wanted to, to show you that the tool does really work. So the, the script has been executed and what's happening now is it's retrieving the schemas again. So it's going off to those two servers uh, and refreshing the schemas, building up the same uh, model again, and once that's happened, we should be able to see that all of the objects are correctly aligned and that everything has been deployed correctly. So, very, very slick, uh, very easy to use. Uh, I mean, a tool that does one thing and just does one thing and does it extremely well, rather than trying to offer, uh, you know, a, a multitude of different functionalities. So, a question that may be uh, popping into your head at this stage is uh, about around data. So, because typically people also have changes to data. And when I, when I say changes to data, I don't typically mean production data. I'm talking about the kind of configuration data or lookup data that you may have associated with your schema, which is required to actually make the database function. So, uh, I'm trying to think of some good examples. Uh, uh, product names, product codes, country codes, pricing. Uh, all these pieces of lookup data have a tendency to change during development. And it's quite often necessary to write scripts to push changes in the production data, sorry, in the lookup data, up into different environments. And so, uh, Redgate, after I'd built this tool, or after we built this tool, we realized that there was a strong need for a data comparison tool. And so we have a very, very similar product, uh, very imaginatively called uh, Data Compare Oracle, which does the same task but on the data. So it allows you to compare tables, uh, see which records are different, and then generate the scripts to move those uh, records between one environment and another. So I won't go through a demo of that today because the webinar is restricted to about half an hour. So uh, do come back to a future webinar because we'll cover it uh, probably next month or in a month or two uh, in more detail. So once you can see that, we come back to the tool, uh, it has completed, and we can see that everything matches. So everything is now an identical. That first uh, table that we looked at, which I'm just trying to pick out, I think was well, this one, uh, we can see that the column that uh, was in the production environment but had been removed from the staging environment is now correct. Yeah? So everything has been deployed correctly. So we've now completely eliminated two steps. We've eliminated the step of writing the script because the tool has written the script for us, and we've eliminated the step of having to check that everything does match because the tool has checked for us and it has shown us that uh, everything is as you would expect. So uh, that's pretty much it from me. I'm just going to uh, sign off by saying, uh, please have a look at the tool. It's a great product. Uh, I'm very proud of it. Uh, the development team here have spent a long time writing it. We'd love to get your feedback. So if you do have a look at it, uh, do write back uh, to me directly, and I'll, I'd love to hear from you. So I'm going to hand back to James now, who will uh, just wrap up. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, so just a, a quick recap uh, from some of the points that Tom made about the Redgate Oracle tools. Uh, so we had a, a quick look at Schema Compare for Oracle, uh, and as Tom mentioned, there is also another tool called Data Compare for Oracle. So both of these tools uh, have been packaged together as a deployment suite for Oracle. 
uh, and we will be looking at future developments to build up uh, sort of a, a whole variety of different tools for uh, Oracle database uh, management. Uh, both Schema Compare and Data Compare support Oracle 9i, 10g, and 11g, and both have a have a free 14-day full trial, uh, obviously with no obligation. What we mean by a full trial is, is there are no uh, limits to the product itself. You can install it, get it running, actually work with it, and use it on one of your current projects now. So you, if you're working on something uh, and you're and you want to take some time to create a script, or you just want to actually try out this product in, in a real-life environment, please download the trial, uh, have a play. There is absolutely nothing that's been taken out out of the trial that's not in the, the full version. Uh, we do offer full support throughout the evaluation uh, if, if you need it. Uh, both Schema Compare and Data Compare for Oracle uh, are priced at uh, 395 US dollars, 295 euros, or 345 uh, Great British pounds. Uh, and then buying both products together, obviously there's a bit of discount here. We can see uh, that together, uh, $595, 445 euros, and 245. Uh, pounds. So we've got a couple of customers uh, already using the products, and we've got some nice, nice quotes here. I, I won't read them out, so I'll just leave them uh, with you to quickly scan over. Uh, of course, they're on our website, and they'll also be uh, in the recording as well. But we see one from Hewlett Packard and one from NIC uh, Incorporated, uh, two companies which you may know of. So what are the next steps for you? Uh, please try out the tools, as I've explained. And you can download both of the tools from our website, which is www.red-gate.com forward slash oracle hyphen development. Uh, if you do actually go to our, our website, and you've forgotten that particular uh, part of the address, since we're all over products, you can see, obviously, all of the Oracle tools are listed within here as well. Uh, you can find out more information from our website as well, uh, or speak with, with us directly. Uh, both Tom and I will be able to answer uh, the call from any of these lines. So we've got UK and Europe, uh, which is a direct line. Uh, UK free phone, uh, which goes through to our switchboard, and, and you'll be directed accordingly. And then a uh, USA toll-free line. Again, this is a direct line through to Tom or, or I. Uh, if you want to email your general uh, inquiries, you can email oracletools.info at red-gate.com. Uh, or at the beginning of the presentation, you would have seen our direct emails, and these will also feature at the end. So please, again, jot these down uh, or wait for the, uh, the recording and contact one of us directly. So a quick summary uh, on what we've gone over today. So Tom's explained that there's a number of different approaches to migrating Oracle database changes. Uh, some that you, you may be, be doing it yourself. Uh, hopefully you're considering uh, third-party tools for these uh, processes. Uh, it's, also, it's not a simple procedure. There are lots of things to be aware of, both in terms of the advantages and disadvantages of using the different approaches to migrating schema changes uh, and data changes. Uh, of course, how your environment is arranged is likely to be a factor in choosing your preferred uh, approach. Uh, but again, we do hope that our tools should suit uh, the majority of environments, if not all of them. Uh, and finally, we had a, a quick look at the, the Redgate tools uh, and other third-party solutions. Uh, and, and please, again, come to our website and, and have a go for yourself. So that's we come to the end of us talking uh, and going through the various parts. Uh, as I mentioned in the invitation, uh, I really would like to, to, to open up uh, the webinar now for some of your questions, but also to generate some discussions. If you've got uh, some tips and advice that you'd like to share with uh, the other attendees, please type that in the questions box as well as just general questions, uh, and we'll go through all of them now.
Okay, so we've got no no questions coming through uh, at the moment. Uh, I'll give give a, give a few more minutes. Uh, maybe trying to try actually find the question box. But if you make sure that the GoToWebinar console is expanded, uh, you should see a, a list of different things. And underneath you've got polls and then questions, and just type the questions in the box. I'm going to take it as a positive that there are no questions, but I mean, it would be really nice to, to share some... Oh, oh, we do have a question. Fantastic. Uh, okay, so the question is, does the schema compare automatically generate rollback scripts? Uh, I'm going to hand this over to Neil Anderson, who is the software engineer, and, and you haven't heard from Neil today, so I'm going to pass this question over to him. Okay, uh, I believe the answer is no, it doesn't automatically generate robot scripts. Uh, yeah, and, and Neil's correct. Uh, I don't know uh, the background on on the person who asked the question. I'm trying to think of who it was. Is it Paul, I think, maybe? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, if Paul, if you've come from our, our SQL Server tools, you'll know that on the SQL Server side, we, we wrap the scripts uh, in transactions so that if anything does go wrong, uh, they roll back. That, that's simply not possible on Oracle. The Oracle database doesn't have this yeah. concept, so we can't. Uh, so we don't. We don't really try and uh, generate rollback scripts. But we we have a like what we call a best practice or advice for, for handling this. Uh, with the tool, you can create a snapshot, and this is not an Oracle snapshot. This is a Redgate schema snapshot of the state of the schema, and that is a compressed binary XML file which contains all of the schema information. So if it's in, and that's a single file, you can create that file, you can put it in source control, and then if you need to roll back, uh, what you can do is you can compare the state of your live database against that snapshot and generate the script to roll back. And that's actually a much better method than trying to create the rollback script when you do the migration because something could happen to your target database. So somebody else could come in and change something. So if you compare to that snapshot and generate the script then, you're kind of guaranteed to get back to the snapshot because the script is being created at the moment when you need the script. So uh, I hope that doesn't sound like a, 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 like a, a weaselly answer. I'm not trying to, to, to get out of your question. Oracle doesn't support rollback transactions, so we don't do it that way. We provide snapshots, compare to the snapshot, and generate the script. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe the issue is that um, Oracle, in the way that it's implemented, is that upon a DDL, um, from DDL being executed, that it is an auto commit. So it causes quite it's the problem rolling back because you commit automatically as you create tables or alter tables or anything like that. Yep. Yep. Does that answer your question, Paul? I don't know if you can. I don't know how this works. Can you can Paul quickly write a reply, or do we just have to assume that he's understood? Uh, Paul, Paul, he can. He can. Uh, <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, yeah. thanks, thanks, Paul. Good question, though. Very good question. That does come up uh, quite a lot. We do a good job in data compare for transactions. Yeah, so data compare is different because that's inserting data. So uh, that is handled transactionally. It's as uh, Neil points out, the DDL changes in Oracle are auto committed. Okay, so there are no more questions. Uh, I'm going to give a couple more minutes. If you have some, some tips and advice that you'd like to share with, with everybody else, uh, it'd be really good to, to jot them in your, your question box and I shall read them out. Uh, otherwise, we'll wrap things up uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes. Okay, so which are the operating systems this tool supports? So I guess you're referring to Schema Compare, but it's probably 
the same for, for both? Yeah, it's the same for both tools. As I, as I mentioned during the demonstration, they're client tools. Uh, so they're dot .NET applications. They run on Windows. Uh, and my recollection is, is that we support everything from Windows XP forward. Uh, I'm fairly sure we don't officially support Windows 2000 anymore. Uh, in terms of uh, what uh, operating system is running on the server, we really don't care. It could be, uh, it doesn't have to be Windows at all. So it's really just a relatively modern Windows client box. Uh, if you don't have a .NET framework installed, when you come to the installer, it will tell you that and it will go off and uh, uh, get you a copy of the .NET uh, runtime to run again. Uh, it's a dot, for those who are interested, it's a .NET 2.0 application, so you can run it against fairly old versions of the .NET runtime. It's self-contained, uh, so there's nothing else you need to install. Hopefully that one's fairly self-explanatory. People do ask if we are going to do versions uh, that are not Windows, i.e. Uh, running it on a Mac client. Uh, that's not really scheduled for any time soon. Redgate's uh, sort of one of our core competencies is .NET development, and that's where we see our future. So all our tools are built in .NET, and I don't think that's going to change any time soon. So, but good question again. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to wrap things up there. Uh, but I mean, if you do have some questions or you think of some questions after this session, please don't feel that, that you've missed out. Uh, we really, really welcome any uh, and all of your questions. I uh, shall so just leave this slide on the screen for a little while, and you can see our uh, direct email addresses. So please feel free to, to drop us a line, uh, either questions about the tools, uh, again, things that, that you're doing that you think would be of interest to us. We'd really love to hear feedback. Uh, I should also put my, my LinkedIn uh, uh, name on there, but you could probably find me on there. Uh, I know a few of you have come through from uh, discussion in, in the various Oracle groups. Okay, so we're going to end the, the webinar now. Uh, thank you again for attending. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this session and it's uh, helped you with, with your projects, given you some good advice, uh, and you're interested in seeing uh, what we have to offer. Uh, thank you, and uh, I hope everybody has a, a nice day. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.